me with a son. No shade to my baby girl. I love her family stay when I place no one above. I hire and a son. This ain't the race I run. Incredible, incredible. Staring at my life out the window as it passed by. A uh, higher, uh, you incredible. You left me to testify. You're merciful. You love us. Never would you forsake us. Yasha came and did the remarkable. Forever in debt to you. Thinking how to repay you. It's expedient to conform into a submission to Christ. Put your lust and your imagination into subjection. It's the only way the Father's gonna grant you protection. If you wanna make the kingdom better, grow to perfection. The wise will take reproof and won't reject his correction. So yourself approve and make sure your election. The world has been deceived. You wanna go where they're headed. Hell has been increasing, many going spareheaded. It's not a light thing to reject his commandments. Don't abuse his grace and treat it like it's a blessing. Present yourself blameless when your soul is requested. Oh, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, incredible, incredible. Praise most high. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I'll praise the most high, man. That's why you praise the most high on, on the Sabbath. You dig me? So with that being said, as always, we're going to give all praise and honor and glory to the most high. Higher. Baha Shem Yasha. That's the name of the most high. And his son, his Messiah, our great king that will soon return to the earth, to the earth and fulfill the will of his father, our father, his God, our God, to bring peace, righteousness to the earth forever. God praises to him. Um, I am Elder Ma'ad, and this is Brother Baruch from Awakening of a Highest Elect Church. See, I did it today. Come on, come on. <laughs> Here to present you another Sabbath lesson from the Most High. The title is Defilement Comes from With no, Defilement Comes from the Lust Within. Okay. Defilement comes from the lust within. We're gonna um Go through some precepts and be the most high will. I encourage all those who listen to really pay attention because the world um, unanimously agree, which is the same thing, um, that they say God knows their heart. Right? So we're going to get into that heart. Because it's the heart, what's in the heart, that come, will come out of the heart, that really defiles a man. Your innermost desires, the lust within, that's what really defiles a man. So we're going to get into some, some scriptures today, as always. And I pray it's edifying for all that's in attendance and those who may watch this video. As always, though, 
this is holy convocation. His Sabbath means the gathering of his people who is reading out of his law. His law is for self-examination. So let us examine ourselves as we go through this lesson. Con? Con. Let's get it. Matthew chapter, Junior, we started class now. Matthew chapter 15, verse 1 through 2. Junior, we in class now. Testing one, two. Test one, two, one, two. There we go. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 1. Then came to Yasha scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, we're going to really get into to this whole chapter and break it down, right? A lot of people misinterpret the premise of this chapter. They use the, the words of the Messiah and, says that it, and say it's okay to eat pork. But we, we're not only going to tackle that, we're going to get into other issues that this chapter clarifies, sets straight, okay? But let's just start from the beginning. It says... Speaking of the Pharisees and the scribes, now these are the religious leaders of Yahshua's time. The religious leaders of the Messiah's time. They're asking the Messiah, why do his disciples transgress, not the law of the Most High God, but the traditions of the elders? The traditions of the elders. Right now in our time, the scribes and the Pharisees are upholding the tradition of the elders. We just, well, they just celebrated Christmas a couple of days ago. And many of them are about to celebrate the so-called New Year's Day or New Year's Eve. That's not of the Bible. That's a tradition of men. So the Messiah is about to point out the filth the disgusting traditions of men that these religious leaders have the children of the Most High God respecting, worshiping, showing reverence to. Right? You're going to show them how they are erring in their teachings, in their practices. So, let's get Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. I beg everyone to really pay attention to what's being stated here. Because today our people are celebrating all these pagan holidays that are against the Most High God. But because we've been programmed with these precepts of men or the commandments of men, their philosophy, their traditions, we're not realizing the harm that it brings about our people. We're not realizing, we're not laying it to heart of how the most high feel about these days. We did less and less Sabbath about Christmas and how the most high sees the feasts of these men. He hates them. Yes. As a sister brought out, awesome. all it takes is a little research. So don't think because you're ignorant that you have an excuse. The most I have gave have given you a brain. We have to use it for more than a hat rack. So you have we have no excuse to be in error when it comes to our obedience to the most high God. Anything else that we're interested in, we have no problem researching that. Mm. You know. Sisters want to learn how to cook a, a recipe or cook a meal, you go straight to you know, wherever y'all go to. You know, Google it. 
Brothers want to know, find out this or that, we go right to Google. Not saying that Google has true information. Google has some information that's true, but the majority of it is false. But the Most High said that we are to diligently seek him. So we can't believe the first thing that we read and think that, that the owners and the creators of Google is going to teach us the truth about the Most High God. We have to diligently seek him. Hey, Junior, I'm not going to tell you anymore. We're in Bible class. So sit down or go on the couch and lay down. And pay attention. Let's get it. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Beware. Now, here's the apostle Paul warning our people and us. Because these scriptures are for our, our learning. We must beware lest any man spoil us. Cause us to ruin with their philosophies. So when we go, when you go to these churches or your gatherings and a pastor or a teacher, whatever you want to call them or her, give you their, a, their philosophy, it's against the most high God. It's not about your philosophy or what you think or what you believe. It's thus says the most high God. What does he say? That's the only thing that matters. So Paul is warning us, beware unless any man, even that man or that woman that you hold so dear to your heart, put your trust in. He didn't say some men, he says any man. Spoil you through their philosophies. And what else? And vain deceit. Vain deceit. The things that they are teaching are vain deceit. Of no profit, nothing. If a pastor is telling you that it's okay to celebrate a pagan holiday or to, do, to, uh, to adopt any of the customs of this world, he's a deceitful worker or she's a deceitful worker. That's what Paul is through the spirit warning us to take heed to. Right? Right? Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. After the tradition of men, not God. So there's no excuse. You can't say, like we said last week, if you're doing something for the kids. It's the tradition of men. Regardless of how you want to create it in your mind to the most high, you are rebellion rebellion against him. Either you do it or you don't. If you do not partake in it in no way, shape, fashion, form, that's obedience to the Most High. If you create your own ideal of what you're doing on these days, you're rejecting the Most High. Bottom line, if you won't get with your family, do it on a day that these pagans are not doing what they do. Okay, don't, like I said, you cannot make something wicked good. You can't. Because if the most high right now, and for those in the audience who do not understand this or lack the knowledge of this truth that I'm about to say, sister, we are under constant surveillance by the angels. So everything we do and say is getting recorded, whether you believe it or not. And for example, even in the pagan song concerning Christmas, when the concerning Santa or Satan, they're telling you what the most high knows. He knows when you've been good or bad because we're in a constant surveillance. They're taking the truth from the most high and putting it within their paganism because Santa Claus got nothing to do with Christmas. It's Satan. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the most high know when you are obedient to him or disobedient. Right? Your, your vain imagination does not fly over with the most high. Let's get it. <clears throat> after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. See, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Christmas is not the Messiah's birthday. Neither did the Messiah ever command anyone to celebrate his birthday or any other person's birthday. It's not 
of the Hebrew God. It's idolatry. It's the worship of, of yourself. The exaltation of yourself. Okay? The Most High does not condone that. You have to worship him and him only, not yourself. As we stated last week, the important thing is, it's the day you die. How you die in the eyes of the Most High. Not the day you was born. So we are to be, we are to consider our end. Like if I die today, what standing would I be in before the judge? That's what we are to have our mind on. And live accordingly to that thought. Read. Next precept, the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. So you see through these philosophies and these traditions of, after the rudiments of this world, man can be spoiled can be decayed, destroyed. <clears throat> and it reads, As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. See, Christ has a doctrine in this Bible that we're teaching right now today. Every Sabbath, we teach the doctrine of Christ. So we are commanded. And everyone who uses this Bible are commanded to teach no other doctrine. So if you're not keeping the law, seven commandments of the Most High, and you're following these pagan holidays or doing your own will, that's not the doctrine of Christ. It's not the doctrine of Christ. We're going to continue this in the next precepts, but let's get it. Verse 4, neither give heed to fables and in endless genealogies. So neither give <laughs> take heed to fables. You know, what, you know what your grandparents said. An old, you know, tale from the past. It's not about them. It's not about what they say. It's not a he say, she say thing. Again, it's what the most high say. Then it warns us not to uh, get involved in endless genealogies. Now, does that, that mean that we are not to consider who we are? No. But I know for a fact, according to scriptures, according to prophecy and curses, and other identifying markers in the Bible that I'm an Israelite. Uh -huh. Truthfully, what tribe I'm from, I don't know. So the Bible warns us not to get so heavily involved in trying to figure out what tribe you're from. But if you fit these curses, you're an Israelite. Christ is going to separate tribe by tribe and Gentile, Gentile. Okay? But according to what I've read about my, who I call my father Judah, I'm just like him. Okay? Mm -hmm. Out of every other patriotic father that we have, I relate more so with Judah. But do I know I'm a son of Judah? No, I do not. But I know I am a descendant of Jacob. Okay? That I do know. Because his people are suffering these curses. Come. Okay? Yeah, he said it'd be for a sign and a wonder. That means it'd be apparent who his children are in this earth. And we know we fit the curses. So Deuteronomy 28. Those Jewish people don't fit one of them. Okay? But let's go. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which administer questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. So, while you're spending our energy trying to figure out this and pay attention to these fables, we are to be those who are in the know, edifying his people. Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's precept. The book of Galatians chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. This class would be a lot more quicker than the other classes. I know y'all would like that. Let's, hey. yeah. Ye a little faith. Yeah, don't get excited. Don't excited. <laughs> Y'all don't better than that. Oh, man. I'd say about two hours, two and a half hours. Ah. Hey, have the, have the spirit move us. Can you hear? You can hear right now? Mm. Oh, last opening. It was so, you know, yeah. 
Okay. Let me uh, slack it. Let me just... You can hear it. It sound, it sound good today. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about today. Hella day. Okay. Now, when nobody, they want yeah. to distract everybody and irritate wow. them. But, but seriously, Probably I mean, that, that's, that, that's a really. Uh, who the phone is? Can y'all turn y'all ringer? Uh, y'all yeah, fam, can everybody uh, put the phones on mute, please? Yeah. But that's a really uh, good tactic, though. Because mm-hmm. interference on the video, it irritates you. So it's like, man, it was interesting, but I ain't got time for all that buffering and mm-hmm. stopping. So you it lead more people to you know turn off and go to something else. You know how mankind is. We have a short attention span as it is. But we're going to keep doing the work. So for those who maybe watch this on Facebook, if you have technical problems, I mean, if we have te- technical problems on this video or any other video, Go to our YouTube page. We record it also on YouTube. Mm-hmm. We do it live on Facebook, but we always record it on YouTube. Our channel is Awakening, a highest elect church. We always record them and we put it, we upload them after the uh, Sabbath class. So go there, uh, subscribe to the channel, you hit the alarm so whenever it, it, it comes up, you can get it. Awakening, Awakening, a highest elect church on YouTube. Let's get it. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 8. And it reads, How be it, then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that, ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Now check, let's break this down, right? So for all those like who you know, profess to be Christians, right, followers of Christ, Christ commands us to only follow him as the scriptures say, not what some man tell you or some woman tell you. Because if you're following Christ and celebrating these pagan holidays and not keeping his holy days, the whole days of his father and God, you're not following him. If you're not keeping his commandments, and Christ has many commandments. Matter of fact, for those who do not know this, it is written that he that, that sinned under Christ is subject to more punishment than one that sinned under Moses' law. Now that's the, the proper interpretation. No, that's not even interpretation. That's the proper statement. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to 31 is explain it all plainly for you. There's more punishment for sinning under Christ than Moses. For all those, uh, Moses' law is done away with us. Okay? Mm. Get a hand up. Oh. So, it says at one time, when we was in other religions, we served them, which was no gods. Idols. Right? Idols. Whether you believe it or not, all religion is associated with idols. You don't believe me? Check it out for yourself. The cross has nothing to do with Christ. It has a lot to do with a Babylonian deity called Tammuz. Okay? And I'm just going to stick with that because other religions, they don't even uh, acknowledge Christ. So, you know, as Christ says, they're condemned already. So I advise you, you and any other thing, you need to come out of that too because, you know, there's only one way to the kingdom. It's only one way to salvation. And that's through the Messiah, Yasha. Outside that, I feel for you. And those who believe all this other nonsense, you know, and it, it may be three hours, y'all, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But I have a hard time having a conversation with people that go against this Bible, but will argue you up and down about facts. Facts. Like, I know that those are facts. Because some man is telling you what you believe. But you would not, but you would deny this Bible, the only thing that's pure and good in this world. I'm like, for those who don't know this, the synagogue of Satan, 
right? Those Jewish people, they control everything. Mm. And I say everything, everything. Anything that can enter your ear or your mouth, they control it. Okay? So, we are what we eat. So when 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 you do your research, and it says, you know that these Samarian or those, uh, these texts of uh, how he said the Samarian Texas, it's before the Bible. That's foolishness because the Bible is in the heavens; it's in the stars. Uh. Samarian Texas was not created before the heavenly. Okay. The Bible is in the stars, see, but you wouldn't know that because you deny the Bible. It, they're called, it's called the heavenly tables. When Adam and Eve was on earth, whether you believe in Adam and Eve or not, because some people think there's people before Adam, which is nonsense. See, you must deny the most high if that's your belief. But when Adam and Eve was on earth, they had their son self write down their testimonies it's from on and on and on throughout generation to generation so the bible is not the beginning of anything adam had commandments self had commandments and on and on and on enoch enus noah had commandments before the Ten Commandments and the other laws that Most High gave Moses to give our forefathers. It's the same laws been, been been forever, but you're trusting that some man is telling you that this was before this. Who was not even present when that was created? So why would you trust that over the Bible? Or they tell you that, that they found some bones, which are the oldest bones on this earth. Which is ridiculous because, as far as I, as far as I know, the earth is huge, and no man has excavated the whole earth. Hmm. So what happened if somebody miraculously just found some more bones that's older than those bones? Do all you believe be for not? You get what I'm going? What I'm going with this? It's foolishness. Trust in this Bible. Yeah, these demons have taken out the Most High's name. They have changed some things in the Bible, but the, the but the all in all, the majority of the Bible is beneficial. It's enough in this Bible. As a matter of fact, and see that's something too. You must understand that there's a spirit, there's spirits in operation. And there's a greater spirit. It's called the God of all gods, the most high higher. No spirit or other God can overpower the most high or stop his will. So he he willed it and protected it the majority of this book for his children to come back to him. And we profess to be his children that have come back to him. Through the knowledge that we have in, in this book. Cannot come back to the Most High in no other book. So, let's think about that. Y'all you know, believe what <coughs> NASA tell you. You believe what scientists tell you. What this uh, so-called expert tell you. Or this so-called, what, what do they call these people? Um, archaeologists. They are Freemasons. Uh. I mean, they are, they have an oath to, they, they made an oath to deceive the whole world. They are evil people, and y'all trust in everything they tell you. But they're the ones tell you not to read your Bible. If you renew your history, these are the same people that was burning this book. Mm. We're destroying families for reading this book. Which y'all say, you know, is a fake book or not real. Why would they kill people and burn people and you know, destroy an uh, innumerable amount of people if it was a fake book? Uh, come on, but, I'm just, but you get what I'm saying, though? Uh, Learn your history. And for y'all so-called black Americans, you remember not that long ago, they was killing your people for reading this book. Mm. When well, lie would it read, and now you saying this book is, is, is tampered with. Why would they do that? Could it be that they didn't want you to figure out who you really are? 
and what your real responsibilities are to your creator? Mm -mm. Could it be that they hate you that much? Could it be that they cannot destroy the will of the Most High God nor stop it? This is why the descendants of those slaves are awakened in the last days and are in front of your face right now teaching the truth about the Most High God and glorifying his holy name, Ahia. Could that be the case? Meditate on that. Let's go. Verse 10. Ye observe days and months and times and years. Now, check this out. <clears throat> I hear this all the time. See, when, when people are fighting the fact that we have to keep the holy days, they take you to the scripture. See, it says, see, you observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. He ain't talking about the holy days. We're going to prove that. This is, the, this is the Apostle Paul. See, you reserve days, times, and years, and months. Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, Mother's Day. See, that's what it's talking about. Things that are outside the Most High. Do the Most High have days, years? Yes. But he commanded us to keep his holy days. Not the traditions of men. Paul said, I'm afraid of you. You outside of the commandments of the Most High God. And to show you that this is not talking about the holy days, let's get the, the next priest up and see what the same man that is writing this is doing. It's following. So if Paul was talking about it was wrong for us after the death of Christ to follow the holy days, check this out. Let's precept. The book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 21. We must teach this Bible precept on precept. That's how you get understanding according to the Bible. Through like precept, I get understanding. Ask what? 18, 21. Let's get it. And it reads, But bade them farewell, saying, I must, be, I must by all means keep this feast. He was what? It's Paul. They're trying to get Paul to stay. But Paul said what? He bid him farewell, said, because he got to get to the feast, mm -hmm. the holy convocation, the high holy day of the most high, what y'all call Pentecost, mm -hmm. what we call the Feast of Weeks. All right? So Paul, because under the law, the street, now there's more than, than, than three holy days, but there's three where all men are commanded to attend in Jerusalem at this time. Mm. And that has not been done away with because Most High knew that his children would be disobedient. He would kick us off our land, the land of Jerusalem, the land of Israel, and he would scatter us across the four corners of the earth. So he says, keep his feast forever in all your dwellings. In all your dwellings. Forever. Okay? So let's get it. But bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. So if the, if the holy days are done away with, let me ask you a question. Was Paul before Christ's death or after? Hmm. Was Paul before Christ's death or after? And who appeared to Paul? The Messiah himself. So Paul is doing what the Messiah commanded. Mm -hmm. He said, I would love to stay, but I got to go keep this feast day in Jerusalem. Okay. He feared the most high. Next precept. Let's, <laughs> let's get the, 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 the truth of what holy day he was keeping. Because I have to back up what my statements to the precepts. God's word. Acts chapter 20, <clears throat> verse what, six, 16. 16. Next precept, the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 16. Okay. And it reads, For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. See there? Pentecost. Y'all still call it that today, but I don't know what y'all are doing now. But it's the Feast of Weeks. 
which is one of the big three. The apostles are still honoring the holy days of the Most High God after the death of Christ. So ask yourself, who stopped you from keeping the holy days? Because mm -hmm. Christ is going to talk about these religious leaders, how they laid aside the commandments of God and teach the precepts of men, the commandments of men. See? Those days, months, and years Paul was talking about is what they had going on in Rome. Saturnalia, your Christmas. Paul said, hey, I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid for you. So for those who keep these pagan holidays, as Paul stated, I'm afraid for you. You know not what you do. Next precept. <clears throat> Next precept, the book of Matthew, chapter 15. And, oops, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And just to add something to that. Not only Paul, but for those who read some of this Bible, who have read the Bible. Remember when, you know, when Paul got there, all the apostles and, and, and Jews were there. Even Gentiles were there to honor the holy day of the Most High. When the Holy Spirit rushed out upon all the people and they spoke in real tongues, real languages. They all was gathered. They were still keeping the holy days. Because the holy days is of it's, it's a part of the law. It's a ceremonial part of the law. For those who don't know, we gonna say, I'm gonna say it again. You got the moral, civil, uh, ceremonial, and dietary. That's the law. Which has not changed, obviously, because the, the apostles are still doing it. And I rather follow the apostles than these Pharisees and scribes of today. Mm -hmm. Okay, Christmas is not in the Bible. Okay, let's get it. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So, ask your pastors, your religious teachers, why do you transgress the commandments of God? And keep your traditions. Ask them. And see what they say. They get thrown out. Hey, I would be thrown out of fire than, than stay in. Hmm. Let's get it. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Now we touched on this last week. So you make the commandments of God of none effect by your traditions. The laws have a premise. Christ says that this disobedient child was supposed to be, or as we said last week, this incorrigible child was supposed to be stoned to death. Okay, we're going to back that up with scripture to today. Why? Because what Christ is saying is that this incorrigible child is basically bribing the, the, the priest. And the priest is releasing him from the penalty of death. He has taken a bribe, a gift, a gift to the treasury, which we're about to break down in a minute. And release this child. So when a priest released this incorrigible child, which was supposed to be stoned to death, that creates what? A community of incorrigible children. And guess what? They have children that follow their footsteps. So it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until you have what we have existing in our time. And for you teachers out there, I think you know what I'm talking about. Because y'all catching, y'all catching hell in these public schools. Yeah, but that's what happens when you don't follow the laws of the Most High. Most High said, do this so the, so the <laughs> children and the people will fear. So the next child would not be that way. Because he said, that's why he said you make his, his law a non effect. The effect is to keep the community clean. But that, that liar that false priest 
for filthy lucre's sake, release the demons into the community. And then they had more children and children as we just stated. Now we have a, a, a whole world of disrespectful, selfish children. Ain't scared of nothing. But see, that's what, the, see, the most high law is good. A lot of people want to get mad at the most high because he has judgment, but he, he does everything for a reason. He knows what sin brings. It takes death sometimes to keep it clean. Right? But let's read it. Let's, let's, let's back that up. Let's get it. Mark 7. No, we right where we at? We right here? Yeah, Mark seven in that word. Well, well yeah, let's get let's let's get, uh, get the word. Yeah, Mark seven. <coughs> I, I, I'll be for it. Mark seven is is also saying this the same precept, but it's putting the word there so we can get more understanding mm -hmm. what it's talking about. Let's get it. The book of Mark, chapter seven, verse eleven, and it reads, "But ye say." If a man shall say to his father or mother, it is korban, that is to say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. It is a gift, right? And let's get it. Mm -hmm. What does G2878 say? Um, it says, of the Hebrew, which is 87133, uh, and it says, a votive offering and the offering, a consecrated present, like one that would be given to the temple or fund, um, treasury. So it's a gift to the treasury. Who does the treasury go to? To the priest. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. Right? The father then brought his child to the priest to, 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 to seek righteous judgment, and the child then gave them a gift. Right? Read. Read it again. Read it again. No, read it. The, the breakdown of the scripture. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is korban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. He shall be free from death. Okay? Because Christ said that child supposed to die. Dependent, he, said, he, said, he, should, see, he should die to death. What death? We're going to find out. Let's get it. Deuteronomy 21, 18 to 21. And it reads, If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father. That's an incorrigible child, one that would, could not, would not be corrected. Or the voice of his mother, and that, when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him, and bring him out unto the elders of the, his city, and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, of his city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with so stones. What? Shall stone He's him with glutton. stones. He's a glutton of sin. And the, all the men in, in the city should do what? Shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among, from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. For an example. That's the guy of the Hebrews. See? Because our priests became unrighteous. We have what we have today. Okay? Same thing we got going on in these churches right now. There's no one standing up for judgment. No one stand for the Most High and say, this is what the Most High say. We cannot accept this. We cannot allow this. See? There's nothing new under the sun. They're getting paid off the same way they got paid off back in the day. Next precept. 
Next precept, the book of 1 John, chapter 2, and verse 4. And it reads, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So that priest is one who professed to know the Most High, to do the service of the Most High, which is to teach the laws and the ways of the Most High God. If you do not keep the commandments, and that just don't go for the priest, that go for the people too. You are a liar, and the truth is not in you. Any pastor, so-called teacher of this Bible, that does not keep the laws and statutes, commandments, and judgments of this Bible, or as Christ says, of this prophecy, of this book, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. And Christ warned and chastised those religious leaders of, their, of his day. He said, you are, you are a liar. He said, you do the will of your father, who is the devil, who was a liar from the beginning, and the truth was not in him. But there's no truth in him. So it's no marvel that his ministers are following the desires and will of their father, the devil. So if they're making excuses for you to celebrate Christmas along with them, they're liars and the truth is not in them. The Most High hates them. I'm going to back that up too. Let's go. The book of Matthew chapter 15 Verses 7 through 9. The Most High hates all those who do not keep his laws. Flat out. He hates all those, regardless of how you personally feel. I'm going to keep saying that because a lot of us stuck on how we personally feel. He hates all those that do not keep his law, statutes, and commandments. That's what his wrath is coming to the earth for, to destroy all those who despise his law. Right? And it reads, ye hypocrites. Ye who? Hypocrites. You hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Please, my people, listen to Christ. Listen to the Messiah. He's telling you what's really going on. Any person, again, that teaches this Bible and teach paganism, Anything that is against Christ, something that Christ did not command, they're pagan. They're worshipers of Satan. You can only serve one or the other, the most high or Satan. If you're celebrating these holidays, if you're going to church on Sunday, which is an order from the Roman Catholic Church, Sunday is not the most high Sabbath. Sunday is the first day of the week. For those who might, this may be your first video, I'm going to inform you of what's really going on. The most high, the most high Sabbath is the seventh day, which is Saturday. The most high time start when the sun sets. Evening, morning was the first day. Evening, morning was the second day. He's speaking about cycles, right? Mm -hmm. Even the sun goes down. So let's let's do the whole 24 thing, hour clock. Sun goes down, it's a whole cycle. You have evening, you have morning, and when you get back to evening, guess what you have? Evening, morning, the second day. Do it again. Evening, morning, the third day. That's how it works. Anyone who want to get on YouTube and teach some different, I'm saying all these brothers talking about this other stuff. The Most High never commanded that. Never commanded that. It's when he say so. You can't change the Sabbath and say, well, my Sabbath is Sunday. My Sabbath is Monday. My Sabbath is whenever. No, that means you don't understand how to properly operate on the Sabbath. 
It's the most high's day. No one else's. You can't rob the most high of his day. It's the day that he chose to hollow. The day that he chose to hollow. He didn't finish creation on the third day. He didn't finish creation on the first day. He finished creation and rested. He finished creation on the sixth day and rested on the seventh day. That has nothing to do with you. It's his. And he said, it's so important, he said, that it would be a sign between him and the children of Israel. A sign that cannot change. The Most High does not change. Okay? That happened. That blasphemy, that evilness came from the Roman Catholic Church. Google, who, did the Roman Catholic Church change the Sabbath day? And research, I just gave you the information to, to type into Google and see what those devils tell you, the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope. They changed it. But the Most High warned us in the book of Daniels, he said that this kingdom, this son of perdition, this son of destruction, this son of Satan called the Pope, will think to change times and laws. They would think to. So their thought will influence millions of people, billions of people. But the Pope cannot change the Most High's mind. The Pope cannot change what the Most High created nor stated. He will be thoroughly judged for his disobedience, for his idolatry, for exalting himself above the Most High and his Son, Christ. Don't you follow them? If you do, as Paul say, I fear for you. So as the sister brought earlier, do your research. Next precept. Next precept, the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. See, Christ said that this people, they, they honor me with their mouths and worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far mm -hmm. removed from me. Now, what that equals up to, right? That equals up to a so-called spiritual person. Anybody want to talk about them themselves being spiritual? As I just told a sister a couple of days ago, the fallen angel, Satan, is spiritual. Hmm. What does that mean? And when it talks about, you know, serving God in spirit, it has nothing to do. What, what being spiritual means, as Paul going to break down in the next precept, that just means that you have a zeal. So when the brother gets on, on YouTube and talks about, you know, the Christian church, they got the spirit. That's not what the, what, what, the, what the Messiah is saying. You must worship God in spirit and truth. Hmm. It has nothing to do with excitement or emotions. When it says worship him and that, 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 that the God of the Hebrews, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, is looking for them to worship him in spirit and truth, that means with a pure heart it's a, or in sincerity and truth concerning his doctrine. It has nothing to do with zeal. Be careful. Let no man deceive you. It has, that's not what it means by in spirit. He don't care if you rump down the hallway and do backflips and fall out. They got nothing to do with him. <laughs> Y'all laughing at me for. <laughs> Man. <laughs> but for real though. Mm -hmm. That's not what it means by spirit and truth, people. Okay. Let's get it. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. And it reads, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Same as Paul. My heart desire, our heart desire is for our people to be saved. You can only be saved with this truth. The truth is what set you free from spiritual bondage, spiritual darkness. Mm -hmm. 
the truth is what you must be obedient to. The truth is Christ's gospel, his doctrine. Right? For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Same people. These Israelites, these so-called African-Americans, uh, Mexicans, and Puerto Ricans, and Jamaicans, and yada, yada, yada. We have a zeal for the Most High. These uh, Haitians, they got a zeal. They're spiritual. But they're sacrificing to devils. Mm -hmm. See, the people have not changed. We're the children of those people that Paul is talking about. We're just like our foreparents. We have a zeal. There's no other people on earth have a, a greater zeal for so-called God than the children of Israel. Right? Tomorrow, they're going to be singing, hooping, and hollering for real. Doing what I said a little while ago. Running down, doing backflips, and passing out, and hmm. praise the Lord, and, and, and yes, Jesus. Yeah. And no, oh, no, they're going to be getting in. Yeah. How, like, they, yes. They chose some Hawaiian, um, their, it's a ritual dance, mm -hmm. or a the Mm-hmm. Go hard. Yeah. Hmm? Let's, let's, let's get it. Mm -hmm. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Stop right there. See there? This is where people err. God. We have a zeal for God. But because we don't know the righteousness of the Most High, we don't know His laws and commandments. We don't know how righteous the Most High really is to those who are obedient to Him. Because it's all in the book. His righteousness is in this book. Mm -hmm. How He really is. How good He really is. We establish our own righteousness. So we say it's okay to do what we want to do. We say it's okay to celebrate these pagan holidays because we're not doing it for this. We're not doing it for that. You're serving the devil. Mm -hmm. Because of, again, what you think. If the Most High does not command it, you are outside of him. If you're outside of the Most High, you are a child of the devil. According to the scriptures. You are, you're a servant to who you obey. You're going to be a servant of the Most High God? There's only one way you can serve the Most High God. We're going to get to it shortly. And there's many ways you can serve the devil. If you... Create your own righteousness. You're not serving the Most High God. You cannot serve the Most High how you want to or how you feel. Either you're going to do what he say or you're not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read to you, you are what Christ was quoting from when he said spirit and truth. Joshua, don't turn now, I'm just going to read it. Joshua 24, 14. Mm -hmm. You see it? Mm -hmm. Where? Oh, it, it says, Know therefore, fear the Most High, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods of your fathers. And put away... Wait. The gods of your fathers. Know therefore, fear the Most High. That's what we must do first. Fear the Most High. If you fear the most high, you will not lean on your own understanding and say you can and create your own righteousness. Okay? It says, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye a higher. See, these pastors are serving the same gods that our fathers worship in Egypt. And before the flood, when Most High destroyed the whole world and say a people. These are the same demons that's called by another name. But you're doing the same thing. They just changed the name from Christmas I mean, to Christmas from Saturnalia. Right? And to whatever Babylonian practice it was before Rome. Before Rome. It's all paganism. We must put the gods of our fathers away. And serve the most high in sincerity and in truth. That's what Christ was quoting from when he said, in spirit and truth. That's what it means. Next precept. Mm -hmm. This is the latter part of uh, Romans 10, 3. 
For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Now, these are spiritual people, but they're ignorant to God's righteous, righteousness and his word. Con. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. See, you have not submitted <clears throat> yourself. You have to submit to the most high. If you're doing your own thing, you're, you're not submitting. Submitting means that you put all your, like Christ says, we must only do that which pleased the Father. That's submitting yourself. That's putting your desires to the side and doing what the Most High say. So even though our people have a, have a zeal for God, the highly spiritual people, they have not submitted themselves to the Most High, even though they think they have. That's why Paul said they're ignorant. Don't mean you're stupid. You're ignorant into what you're doing because you are being deceived every Sunday. Every Sunday. And other Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, y'all go in them holiday houses. You've been deceived. They're not teaching you, commanding you. They're not submitted to the Most High. Neither are they commanded it. You can't command something that you're not doing. You can't tell people to keep the laws and you're not keeping them. You can't say don't practice uh, Christmas is pagan and you're celebrating it with your family mm -hmm. and friends. See, that's how it works. The blind is leading the blind and they both go into a ditch. Mm -hmm. Let's go. The next precept, the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 18. And 20 through 22. Take heed to the warning that the apostles are giving us, y'all. See, this, this is nothing new. What's going on right now is nothing new. Like, like, like it's written, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. There's no sin common to man. There's no sin that, it's the same temptations. By the same demons. They're doing the same old tricks. This when we have more children, they try them on them. They have children, they try them on them. Like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why fix it? Satan deceived the whole world, and that includes you. Why fix it? It's worked so well for them. So much to a point where our people was beaten and killed and set on fire alive to celebrate pagan holidays we had men and women who stood up for the most high kept their integrity and died a horrible death because they hoped for a better resurrection they said it's better for us to die than to, than to, than to break the commandments of our God and our fathers mm -hmm. what happened to that the violence of the Gentiles put fear into our people's hearts those mothers didn't want their sons to go through the same thing. Those fathers who was cowards didn't want to die the death of obedience. As the Most High said, it's a beautiful thing for the righteous to die in their integrity. I said earlier when we first started the lesson, it ain't the day you're born, it's the day you die that's important. Did you die obedient to the Most High? Did you overcome Satan and took the death. Because Christ promised you to glorify you if you did. He says, all those that overcome, he commanded us to be faithful even unto death. He will reward you. For all the people who don't want to wait, have patience on them on, on the most high. Well, Christ talks about you too. He said that you are having you are receiving your reward in full. This is the best it's gonna get for you. Then it's going to get real hot. It's the best it's going to get for you. And your so-called best life mm -hmm. is an illusion. And you know that. Read. Chapter Lessons 2, 18. Verse 18. And it reads... Let no man beguile you of let, your reward. Let no man trick you. In, 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 a, in, in a voluntary... 
Salak, I'm sorry. I'm Let no man de beguile you of your reward in the voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Of who? Angels. Mm -hmm. I warned you. I said these pagan holidays are the reverencing, worshiping of devils. See, those angels are bad angels. You're not supposed to worship no angel. Okay? Paul said, he warned you, let no man trick you. Because when you do these, these, these holy days, when you keep your own, do your own will, you're serving other angels. Let no man trick you into the voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. All these things, they won't tell you the truth. That's why when you re do research, you see how demonic, how satanic they really are. You're not doing it, but people, a lot of people that's over you receive power and authority from Satan by sacrificing people and children on your holidays. You're just a partaker of the energy, of the vibration that feeds these demons. But you think you're not, but you are. Yes. How they're all on one accord on one vibration, and everybody wonders why the spirit of killing, mm. killing themselves, mm. like why is it such a bad spirit this time? And everybody has admitted it. Mm. But during the holidays, they feel like this, this happened, suicide rate goes up. Everybody is all on one accord worshiping yep. the demon. Sister just said that if you pay attention. Not just Christmas, but you no know, Christmas is like their high holy day. Mm -hmm. But all the so-called holidays, you know, because of what you believe, anyone is worshiping it. Mm -hmm. People who don't believe, so-called don't believe in God, Muslims, Buddhists, Egyptologists, uh, Catholics, who, Moors, Moors. Canadians, <laughs> Canadians well. What, Everybody show you that it's deeper than what's on the surface. Mm -hmm. She brought up about how this time of year is the highest time for crime. It's the highest time for suicide. Right? Because that's the energy has come to its climax. And they are really at work. That's why it's so much how can I put it? So much debauchery, so much sin, so much crime that's going on. Everybody's getting super drunk, super high on all kind of drugs, and are being used as vessels for the demons and don't even know it. That's why at these times the family get together, but there's so much fussing and fighting going on. Mm-hmm. Then you have people who are depressed because they can afford to get their children this or they couldn't afford to do this and or their loved one is no is not here anymore. Mm -hmm. See, all that stuff ties in the spirits. God. Depression is a spirit. All crimes are spirits. All sins are spirits. There's a spirit of fornication. There's a spirit of perverseness. There's a spirit of homosexuality. All these are spirits. But these, these, these demons in flesh have lied to us and, and come up with a diagnosis form or a term form. The Bible says it's demon possession. Mm -hmm. read, a, read the Bible and see what the, the Messiah was doing when he was on earth. All these people who had these so-called sicknesses, infirmities, they were demons. He cast them out of them, and they was no longer sick. Mm -hmm. He don't need drugs. The Messiah never gave anybody a pill and said, call him in the morning. Mm. Never. But the, but, but the drugs are to keep you in a zombie-like state. They want you not thinking. That's why the Bible warns us and say, be sober-minded. Warning you of the of the sorcery of the pharmacy. These drugs are, are people. I was once one. I was a borderline stoner. I was, <laughs> I was a stoner. You was a goner. I was a goner. 
Say one on the borderline about it. <laughs> you cross the borderline. <laughs> no borderline. No borderline. Oh, okay. Vs it up. <laughs> well, thanks for the correction. I was a stoner. Stay high. Night and day. Get three, four in the morning high. Oh, man. By myself, wife sexy. Wife telling the truth of me. Oh, I'm, man. I'm trying to be kind to the audience, but I was a stoner. <laughs> they don't be. <laughs> a borderline. <laughs> you. Huh? But. You're lying. Lying on the Sabbath. <laughs> but. So I'm saying, when when you stay in that state, you don't think clearly. Mm-hmm. The demons are taking over you. It's easier to do things that you would normally would not do. Mm-hmm. See, they want you like that. They want you in a zombie-like state. Like now, I, I look back at it. I see my homeboys. I would like to say I was once one, but just high for nothing. Like just walk around high. Like I, I walk around high. Some people, like my wife, you like. You smoke all the time? <laughs> Is every time you ain't high? You know what I'm saying? But, but demons want you in that state. Mm-hmm. Why do think they make marijuana legal in most of these states? They want God's people to not be sober-minded. And, yeah. Let's mm-hmm. get it. Uh, verse 20. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of this of the world, you Christians. Now, again, don't get offensive. Don't get offended at this. This is just the Bible. This is to wake you up out of sleep. Because if you call yourself a Christian, a Christian, you're supposed to be dead with Christ, according to the Scriptures. Now, your pastor might tell you something else, but according to the Scriptures, anyone best to be a Christian or a follower of Christ. You're supposed to be dead with Christ. That means the person that you were before you got baptized is dead. And Christ is supposed to be formed in you every day. You're supposed to grow into perfection. But how do you grow into perfection if you don't know the laws or keep the laws? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible is to make the man or woman of God perfect. Mm -hmm. Fully equipped for every good work. Yes. Uh, just may I add real fast, or how do you know what perfect means to the Most High? Because most people in the world think perfect is this uh, unobtainable, um, you know, thing with our vain fleshly mind because we don't understand the scripture. God, exactly. Great point. Mm-hmm. They argue for now. Ain't nobody perfect but, but, but Jesus. Right, exactly. I'm like, wait, <laughs> well, so called Jesus, father and mother, was perfect according to the Most High. Mm-hmm. See, kind. You know. Following commandments and sincerity and truth make you perfect. Kind. You must fear the most high. That's the perfectness. It's kind. once you see, you can't get baptized. Be honest with you. You can't be you can't just get baptized and grow and, and be perfect. You're gonna make mistakes. But like anything else, practice makes a better performance. So as you grow into the knowledge, but first you must be uh out of the midst of the sinners. Out of the midst of the Harley house. Mm-hmm. Churches who don't teach this. Mm-hmm. It says, "Can a man put this? Can a man walk on fiery coals and not yet get burned?" Mm. So you cannot continue to hang around people who are willful sinners and keep your integrity because eventually it's going to break you down. It's like walking with with no shoes on, no socks on over fiery coals. You may run across that thing a couple of times and don't get burned, but eventually your feet going to get hot. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't play with sin. You can't play with Satan. You must respect Satan, but you don't fear that worm or dragon or whatever you, uh, Baphomet, <laughs> goat mixed with all kind of things, whatever you want to look like. Don't fear him, but respect him. You got to fear the most high. Okay? Let's get it. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why? See, from the rudiments of the world, so all those, all your worldly ways, your worldly way of thinking, your carnal, your fleshly way of thinking, it's supposed to die. Or you're not with Christ. Read. Really? Why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? See, it's not talking about. What you think it's talking about. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. I mean, real quick, yeah. And it's, it's just talking about the tenets of this earth, like all the things that we wake up, we live for, that we that we fix in our mind to go do that has nothing to do with the most high, that's not mandatory for life. You know what I mean? Like, not like work, but it's talking about, oh, man, I got to work this much so I can buy these gifts for these people, or I got to go get ready to get this stuff for mom's day. So, you know, it's talking about the tenets of the earth that we are uh, subject to to live in Bob just because of the simple fact that um it's what we've been taught you know we're not subject from the most high to live by but we're, we subject ourselves to it so well said I ain't gonna say nothing else let's get it wherefore if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances touch not taste not handle not touch not taste not handle not Leave the unclean thing alone. Mm -hmm. Leave it alone. Leave all that paganism. Leave all your imaginations alone. Like it says, put all thought, your imagination into the captivity of Christ. If he don't say it, touch not, taste not, taste not. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I finished verse 18. Let me go up and get that real get it, quick. Get it, get Verse it. 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next precept, the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 10 through 14. That one that beguiles you, that one that, that deceives you, he's vainly puffed up with his fleshly mind because he don't think spiritually. He don't. His thoughts are not heavenly. His thoughts are not the commandments and the righteousness of the Most High. So he's speaking, he or she is speaking carnally, fleshly, by telling you that it's okay to break God's law. That's, that's, yeah. He that breaks God's law, or he that loves the world, is an enemy of the Most High. Enemy of the most high. Right? Where we at? Matthew 15? Verse 10 to 14? And it reads, And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. My people, hear and understand what the Messiah is about to say. Not that which goes into the mouth defiled a man, but He's not talking about pork right here. Or catfish, shrimp, lobster, crab, calamari, or whatever. He ain't talking about that. He's going to explain to you exactly what he's saying. So for all those that use this scripture, watch what happens when we keep reading this chapter. He's going to explain to you exactly what he's talking about. So you can no longer use this scripture and say you can eat pork. Break God's dietary law. Okay? Not, with, not that which goes into the mouth of defiles a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. See, when the pastor tell you something against the Most High, that's what defile him and you. Okay? But I'm going to keep reading. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Know thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father have not planted She'll be rooted up. What is that plant? The religious leaders, the so-called teachers. Okay? If the most high did not plant them, they will be rooted up. Okay? But this so this goes from, from my, my young brothers who have a zeal for the most high and want to go into these harlot houses, these churches. Listen to what Christ say. Now we can teach out here and teach the truth, but we don't have to go into their facilities and disrupt their service. Because Christ says, let them alone. Let them alone. Let them do what they do. When you find their members outside in the street somewhere, in the store, you know, just out and about somewhere, minister to them. But let them alone. And teach the truth. Expose, like, the, the Most High says, spare not. Tell my children, the children of Israel, of their transgressions. 
Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. We are to do that. But let us not be unchristlike. See, Christ never went in, you know, into the uh, a place outside of what he grew up in. Right? Mm -hmm. It was the only place that the so-called, like the, the, the Pharisees were responsible for teaching the law. That's why he focused on them so much. Because they, uh, they were so-called folks uphold the law. The, 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 the scribes, well, the Sadducees, they didn't believe a lot of stuff that the Pharisees were teaching, but it was against Christ together. But that was the house of the Most High God. And Christ had the zeal, like it was prophesied, he would come in there and toss up tables because they made his father's house a house of robbers and thieves. Right? But let's go. Mm -hmm. Where we at? Uh, 14? Yep. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. These pastors are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. What ditch? Hell. Mm -hmm. So, I beg any pastor that may be watching this, keep watching the classes, even come to class if you, you're in Saginaw. Learn. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You must learn over. You've been lied to. You've been deceived too. Don't be so prideful that you can't come down to humility and learn again. I had to learn again. I was deceived like you. But all praise to the Most High for his, his, for his truth and his spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Next precept. Yes. Yeah, please. Um, this is too long to be a title, but throughout the lesson, something came to me. It says, Give ear unto the true doctrine of Christ, and not the false interpretations of men. That kind of that came to me. Uh, give ear unto the true. Title, title, yeah, we can. Give yeah. ear unto the true doctrine of Christ, not the false interpretations of men. What's the title? Um, defilement comes from the lust within. Okay. That yeah, that's just something that came to me through reading. No, that just came to me like oh, when we, yeah, mm -hmm. like through the precepts. Yeah. That's kind of what I was hearing. Yeah, that sounds good. We can keep that. Kind, kind. Let's get it. What we got? Jeremiah. Chapter 12, verse 10. We're going to deal with these plants that the Most High did not plant. Mm. Because that's a uh, that's question precious. that a lot of people, well, that's something that a lot of people in the uh, Christian faith or in the world to say, they'll say, well, the Bible, every man, they got their own interpretation, like this pastor say this, or that pastor say that, or this church uh, say this. But the thing is, none of it. Um, is in alignment with the doctrine of Christ because he has one doctrine. Many yeah. people and many pastors can have many interpretations, but the scripture is against that. So They are not planted by the Most High. Con, that's con. what it all comes down to. Yep, and that's how you get that. Yep. Con. And we're going to deal right now with that issue. Mm -hmm. Let's get it. The book of Jeremiah chapter 10, chapter 12 and verse 10. Many pastors. Many, not some. <clears throat> not, a, not a couple. Mm. Many pastors. So what you say, brother? They said what? What what'd you just say? That that uh, there are like many pastors um, have different interpretations. They can interpret one way. Another pastor can interpret another way. One church can interpret that way. But none of it be the doctrine of Christ, because there's one true doctrine of Christ. So that's how you get the many interpretations from so many what? different people. The Most High is privy <clears throat> to that knowledge too. Mm hmm. That's what said. That's why you say many pastors have what? Have destroyed my vineyard. Destroy his people. His vineyard represents his people. Read. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have trodden his portion, his people underfoot. Do you understand? See, the most high thoroughly understand what's going on, my people. So it's time, you pass this. The Bible warns you. The Most High warns you. He's speaking of you. You have trodden his people underfoot with your traditions. 
with your philosophies, with your education from your theologian seminary so-called colleges. That is knowledge of and from the synagogue of Satan. These Jewish people are not for us. They are not us. They are the children of the devil, according to the Bible. Christ himself called them the synagogue of Satan. They are the people on this earth that saying they are Jew and are not. And he even gave you some more information about these people. They do lie. Everything comes out their mouth. It's like their father, the devil. It's a lie. They have lied to us, my people. They have lied to you, pastors. The service of God is not of the Gentiles. I said this last week. The service of God only belongs to those that are ordained from the bloodline of Jacob. The Jewish people do not come from Jacob. They come from their father, Esau. No Gentile has the right to teach out of the Bible. It's not theirs. When you read the Bible, as a matter of fact, when it says it was in Antioch that they was first called Christians, right? The apostles was called Niger and by the by these people. Mm -hmm. Guess what that means? Black. And guess what else it means? Christian. Mm. The so-called real followers of Christ, the disciple of Christ, or what they called what they call Christians, were black. And the Gentiles cleaved to these black people. They knew that they had to come to our synagogue and learn about our God to get their salvation. That has not changed people. Yes. They've been, hey, the, they started that in the Grecian Empire. Mm -hmm. the, in, the book of, in, the, in the book of Maccabees, it, it, show, it, it tells us what these Gentiles would do. They would put their likeness in our records. If our records was false, why they put so much effort to deceive us through our records. Mm -hmm. These people were, look, just like me. All the apostles look like me. Why do they put the images of white people in a black man's book? If it don't matter. Mm -hmm. Psychological magic uh -huh. to make you think they're the people and you're nothing. That's powerful people. But the Gentiles must learn from the Israelites. It was it's to them was given the oracles of God. He has preserved our records to bring his people back. And like we said last week, watch last week's class. And you'll get more information on what I'm saying. Soon, once America become destroyed, the Gentile will cleave into us. And say, teach us of your God, the God of Jacob. Surely we have inherited lies from our fathers and have served idols, vanities. You must come to us, whether you like it or not. We are the chosen people of the Most High. We are the royal priesthood. The Gentiles have not replaced us. The Most High said he would never forget his people. So, when you go into these churches, first and foremost, dealing with the changing of the images in the Bible, Christianity is really a racist institution. That's racist. Right now, what I'm saying right now, it may offend a lot of white people because they don't want to learn nothing from a person like myself. Well, your stubbornness will lead you to hell because the Most High said that your rulers, 
He will make bow down. He's going to show you that he loves us. Not speaking arrogantly. Just telling you what's really going to go down. But you would have to humble yourselves. Because you've been lied to just as well as we have. They have ma- Your people have deceived you and made you think that you are something that you're not. Just like the Samaritan woman in Christ's time. She was raised believing she was something she was not. Jacob was not her father. That land was not their land. And Christ says, woman, hey, did the time come, and even not, that you or your people, neither you or your people, be worshiping the father on this land. Uh, <laughs> For salvation is of the Jews. Not of the Jewish people. Uh, of the Jews. Of, of the Jews. Us. Salvation is of the Jews. We are the people who need to be free from all those that hate us. Free from the philosophies and traditions of devils. To be able to worship our God with no fear of anyone. See, that's part of what salvation means. To be released from our enemies. To be released from those who feed us poison every day. To be released from those who kill us without a cause every day. See, told you, we're the children of Israel. Deuteronomy says that this people, my people, will have no assurance for their life. And will fear day and night for their life. And will serve their enemies and want of all things. Who will not lend to anyone, but will, um, but but the, will, will have to borrow from the Gentiles. Will be the tail and not the head. There's a couple curses, you know, off the top. The Jewish people are the head, and not the tail. It's an abomination again. I'm gonna say this every week, if most high will. It's an abomination, which means something the Most High hates for a Gentile to be over the education of God's people. We are not to adopt any of their customs, nor their education, nor their traditions. The Most High required us to be a holy people, a separate people. So how can you be separate and 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 get taught by these people? What would they teach us? How would they teach us of a God that's not theirs? Hmm. According to the Bible, he never gave them his law, statutes, and commandments. So how would they teach you his law, statutes, and commandments? Or even understand them? Yes. Speaking of this education period, you see how over time our instructors have been replaced with people who don't look like us. In the urban area, the majority of the teachers are not as astute as us. Back in my parents' day, all their teachers were look just like them. So over time, I think that was part of their programming as well. Right. Sister said that you can see over time that the nationality, so-called nationality of the teachers have changed, especially in, in our okay. communities. But let's just tackle that for a minute. Even when we had teachers that looked like us, they were teaching us to keep the laws that commandments most high. Mm-hmm. Because they was instructed to teach us what, what, what their instructors taught them. Mm-hmm. They was put before us to teach us lies. Because our education is this Bible. That don't mean because you go to Sunday school, you can educate it. Mm-hmm. We are to fear the most high and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. But let's get it. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. His pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. That's how our people look to the most high. Mm. Once once glorified people look like a, a, a desolate wilderness. A place where nothing can grow. 
Read. Next precept, same uh, book, uh, should be on the same page. Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 10. And it reads. Uh, hey, <clears throat> check it out. It's not just the pastors now. The pastors are just, like, it's like business. Mm -hmm. What's the premise of business? Supply a demand. Mm. That's the premise of business. Supply a demand. So these religions are business. I was talking to somebody this other day. I think it was my, my, my wife. Yeah, come on. T.J. Jason, mm. that mess he teach, talking about some about the transgenders, and he was saying that you know all of them ain't bad people, and you know, and you gotta. What, mm. what you say? It was an interview. Um, somebody asked him, "Was there a place for transgender in the, in the, in the church?" And he said, "It hasn't been." Man. No, he didn't even study. So oh, yeah, of course there are. He didn't say for them to come to the church so they could change and get back to law, statutes, rules, and commandments. But you have to adjust, basically, the church and your teaching. Everybody. So, wow. And if they don't like it at his house, they can go to the next house. But you don't go trying to change my house. This is what we do, and everybody is welcome. Have you ever talked to some people that really nice people? All of them not bad. Blah blah. blah. He just totally went against the Bible. Yeah. See, that's what I mean. I said, I told him. I said, he's. 501, 501, 3, I said 501C3. You have to do what teach what the government teach you to tell you to teach. Not what the Bible say. You must keep your money coming in. You have to teach the doctrine of the government. Mm. Yes. May I, may I add something real quick? Um, and it's like the scriptures say, for filthy lucre's sake, because he makes a lot of money. But just that statement alone really kind of solidified in my eyes that the whole premise now in the uh, role like of the higher ups in the Christian church and stuff it's it's all one it's all entertainment and um it's all to get us into the mindset as far as the masses to accept everything and to really continue to forget about the morals because for him to say that and it goes directly against the bible it just it's a t it's a tall tale sign. It's a telltale sign, you know. Just like the uh, Roman Catholic Church being a hub for Christianity and not teaching none of the laws, you know. It just it's just a humongous red flag, you know. It's no, it's almost no different than the music industry with the rap music and what it does to the youth, you know. As far as with the which Christian, is a religion, which is a religion controlled you know? by the Jewish people. Exactly right, yeah. right. So yeah, controlling the yes, yeah, he didn't say to come to change the right. Life. Wow. You were just the church for them, am I right? Mm. Hold on, before we get that. Mm. Now, he said many pastors have destroyed his vineyard, mm -hmm. right? Now, if I'm getting interviewed, listen, I'm getting interviewed right now. Same question. Is there a place in the church for a transgender or a homosexual? Or a whoremonger, or a fornicator, or an idolater. Okay. If my answer to that is if there's a place for them, if they are they are willing to submit to their Creator, exactly, God, and do the will and the commandments of their Creator, yes, it's a place for them. Okay, that's what the grace is for, because that transgender would have been the person would have been stoned to death. But now under Christ, because the Most High has given us grace for all those who didn't have opportunity to get an opportunity to come into the true knowledge of Him and serve Him in spirit and truth. Now, concerning the trans, the transgender or homosexual, if someone was was to ask me about it. Guess what I would do? I would quote. From the Messiah himself. And, 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 and say verbatimly what he said. How was it in the beginning? Mm -hmm. He created them male. He said male and female. He created he them. In the beginning. How was it? He created Adam and Eve. He didn't create people to decide. What they want to be. Outside of what he created. Mm -hmm. So I would quote what Christ say. For those who are watching this, I'm quoting what the Messiah say. In the beginning, he created 
them, male and female, and told them to go produce, multiply. So that kills homosexuality right there. You can't multiply, you know, male on male, female on female. Mm-hmm. Now, sister, you got something to say? Now, get it. I'm sorry. Okay, let's get it. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 10, and it reads, This evil people, which refuse to hear my words. This who? Evil people. Our people, he's speaking of, his children, the children of Israel. So these pastors are catering to a demand. See, our people are really, who think that they're, you know, they're spiritual. Most High is calling them evil. And the pastors are promoting this and supplying this demand. Right? Because these evil people don't want to hear the words of the Most High. Read. Which walk in the imagination of their heart. Which walk in the imagination. See, the Most High knows of those who think that it's how they feel. Or what they believe. Or what they interpret. The Most High call all that. You say you're walking in the imagination of your own heart. Which y'all claim the Most High knows so well. He's telling you about your heart. You're walking in the evil imagination of it. Mm-hmm. Read. And walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. So all these people who have a zeal for God, but not according to accurate knowledge. Mm-hmm. He said that you'll be as this girdle that the most I had Jeremiah put in some mud. He says it's good for nothing. So your life is really in vain. That's why Christ said you, you worship him in vain. Your life is really in vain when you follow after the, your evil imagination and not after the most highest commandments and ways. Next precept. Next precept, the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 8. Yes. Oh, man, may I add something real fast? Um, the scripture says, Woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. Destruction unto them. Kind. And, and, and it just shows in was being taught like the acceptance of everything when the most high doesn't accept these things. You know, we're taught to accept things that are abominable to him, you know, and this that just kind of came to my mind. It's, it's awfully, it's awfully sad. But that's what this evil people wants to hear. Right. They want to hear that, you know, you know, it's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. They don't want to, to mm-hmm. follow the, the most high. They don't want to be disciplined. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And to like listen to the government when they say, Oh, don't, you can't say anything wrong about this person or this act which they so-called mandated or say is okay is is, is real. It just shows that, it just shows the downward spiral, you know what I'm saying, that that this world is on. Rome has not changed. They, 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 they killed Christ. Mm -hmm. But speaking against the things that, that the people love to do so, so well, Mm -hmm. so much. They tried to get the, the apostles to, to quit teaching the doctrine that they were teaching. Mm-hmm. Killed them, stoned them, chased them out of town. They have not changed. They don't want to hear the most high in the world of Satan. Hmm. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book. This is why he put it in the book concerning this people. He said, go, note it in a book for this people. He's talking to us, people. We are the descendants of these people we are reading about. We're doing the exact same thing that our foreparents did. He called them evil, and their children are evil because they taught them evil. Our parents taught us evil. They didn't, that's what they was taught. But now we're in the last days, and he is has bringing us back to the truth. Of his doctrine. Be not like our foreparents. That was in the category of this evil people. Read. Right? And note it in a book. That they that it may be forever. Forever. Like it, so, uh, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Note it in a book. The same book. This is why they have taught you against this book. Because mm-hmm. the Most High said note it in a book. For in the last days, when the time to come, it will be forever. 
so we will know what not to do and what to do. We are to learn from the examples of our foreparents. So know the end of the book for this people. So they'll know who they are, what they did, and how I feel about it. Read. That this is a rebellious people. A who? A rebellious people. See, he, he know you are rebellious people. So when you make your own, like mind up, how you want to celebrate Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, all this stuff, you're rebelling against the most high. He's calling you rebellious. He said that you are walking in the vain imagination of your evil heart. He has not changed my people. Read. Lying children. Lying children. Tell the lies to yourself and others. Children that will not hear the law of the Most High. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. See, they, see the, the seers are the people that's before you teaching. So if the people are coming to the pastor, they don't want to hear what the Most High say. Mm -hmm. What, what are, are they saying to the teachers? Prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. So they're supplying this demand. Tell us it's okay to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Tell me it's okay to be a transgender. Tell me it's okay that I can lay with a, a woman, can lay with a woman, a man can lay with a man. God loves you. Hmm. Tell me it's okay to be a whoremonger. I don't want I don't want to serve that God. If that's how this, that's how the, that God is, I don't want to serve him. But the Bible already said you're serving a, another God. He know you made your decision on who you serving. Mm. He's speaking about you. Really? Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. That's the demand of our people, people. Mm. Get that guy out of here. I don't want to serve him. He got too many rules. I can't do my thing with him. No, he kind of strict and really kind of harsh, you know. And, you know, he killing people and, you know, what kind of mm. God is that to kill people? Huh? He says, get the evil from amongst your miss. A mm. loving God is one who kills people. Mm. Get the home stone that homosexual because if you don't stone them or her it's going to spread like gangrene mm. and you will have what we have right now can't walk down the street go to the store without seeing a couple of them get inside the store you got a couple of them you know for real you can't go nowhere I'm saying a, a, a side of me I mean I'm like you don't. Mm -hmm. It's a big old dude about your size, bro, switching. Like, what you, bro, you work hard? <laughs> what you doing? Voice, you know, uh, irritating, you know? Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what the most I was trying to protect us from. Like, now they, they, they doing, when you're reading the Bible, all them people in higher places were Salamites for the most part. Kings, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you can watch. You can Romans. They had all the wars. Egyptians had all the wars. Mm -hmm. This ain't nothing new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. The all saying, I. They got a name, a new name now. Oh, L G T. Hey. Obama told you, show you who he was. Straight Salamite. Mm. People told Obama the best president. For who? The homosexuals? Because he ain't did nothing for, for these people. Else. This is the thing, right? Nah. Obama's the best president they claiming, right? Has anything changed in, in our community? For the LGBT community. Right. For the LGTB and QXIZ community, yes. Not only that, but also the LGBT through all that has been likened unto the so-called race of black people. So they're they're the actually minority. Stint, a minority, right? So they've actually been given a social position as almost their own quote-unquote racial entity. They are. When it's they a, a perversion. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. kind of. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It take a lot of effort for that. Yeah. Simon Gamora mm-hmm. the Great is here. Come on. Yeah. Let's get it. Verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Let's check it out. See, our people are not laying the heart why are we in our condition. Mm-hmm. But it's because we are a rebellious people who will not follow his laws and establish commandments as he warns us in Deuteronomy. He said, if you will not hearken to the laws and commandments that I command you this day, all these curses will come upon thee. So now all these curses have come on, up on us. But the pastors are not telling our people what's going on. Mm. They have tried to underfoot God's people. So the most high saying, well, obviously you like being oppressed. You love this perverse lifestyle that y'all are living. And he says, not only that, you stay their own. Because if my people come right now, I'm telling you right now, y'all are still going to say the same. I pray one or two of you don't. I hope one or two of you have an ear to hear. But the majority of you will stay their own. You will stay on the course your own. You will despise the word of the Most High God. He said it himself, not me. You're not laying the heart why we are in a situation. Of oppression. And our way of life is perverted. No one's really getting really married. People getting married, but not like they used to be. Mm-hmm. Yes. You see more not against uh, babies and baby showers and whatever, but you see more celebration of baby showers all out than we do of marrying our daughters and having all out ceremonies yeah. for I was having, I was having, also, I, I had a conversation. And here's a, the conversation was concerning someone who's over teaching children. Yeah. An educator. Mm. Excited that their daughter is in college and have a, a, have a transgender person coming and teaching them and excited about you know, how her daughter has changed and become so open and, and understanding and free. I'm like, this is what is before our children. These Satanists have put these type of people over our children. That's why they're not supposed to be educating our children. Because we have these perverted sodomites over the education of our people. So I want my son to even see one. Let no hear a word come out of their mouth. Hmm. Do you understand that? Yes. You know, now they're going to teach kids about the, the transgender thing that males have, period. Mm. So that's the new thing they're going to teach. A, a man have I'm, a period. I'm glad you mentioned that, sis, because I was going to say something about that, too. Yeah. Yep. They have they have well, look. Because they're really women chained up with the boys. Oh, you threw me off for them. Like, I'm 46. I ain't never had one. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. Con- concerning the class, they're calling this sexual education equality, and then they call that something like menstruation equality or something like that, something crazy. Yeah. But that's that's what I was saying. Like the scripture say, "Woe unto them that call good evil and evil good." And this nation calls this world calls evil good. So it's it's just clear to see that there's destruction coming. Like it's wow. it's, it's it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Daddy, daddy. Because it can so be, you're right. Two moms and two dads. Yeah. So they're already teaching the little kids, so they want, you know, kids to say whatever's on their mind. Mm-hmm. They, no they mm-hmm. start indoctrinating them Indoctrinate at youth. Them. Mm-hmm. Do, do y'all feel like we're in Simon Gamora? Con. Yes. It's, you know, and, no, I, I was talking about this, right? And, 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 and this goes to GOCC. It, it brought my attention, right? Seriously. And I hope this is probably of y'all brother's plans, you know. Because I believe that your fundamental doctrine is true. Sincerely. I really do. But my question is, you are, taking, you are bringing in a lot of money nowadays. 
and you promised to set up churches, and, you know, establish churches and clean the churches up, which I knew you could not do. You can't, the most high is saying this is a rebellious people. You can't clean these people up. It's a personal choice. Your presence does not change people. Mm. You got a headquarters now in Philadelphia. You know, you set up churches, but and then you always are talking about what the people are not doing and what they are doing. Are you going to start setting up schools for our children? Because this is what we are in. Now. We don't have the funding here at Waking High School Church, but you have y'all have a lot of funding coming in. You're always begging on TV. Eight time, eight time, I see you anyway. No, they, that's what I'm saying. He was he, he, forever begging. No, people gonna give. They're gonna give. They know about tides. Can you watch? Can you watch the video about you know these infomercials mm-hmm. basically about yeah. you know paying uh, paying for the uh, Hebrew uh, Academy class, which I've been in about 10, 10 11 of them. I was gonna get in this one, but I, I don't know. This the spirit that moved me. But it's nice education. But let's since y'all got all this money, let's start you know, focusing on our on our youth. Mm-hmm. On our youth, for real, brothers. See, because I know that money comes with a spirit. God. And one of the spirits are forgetfulness. We cannot forget our children. Because there, there's a lot of people that, 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 that follow you. I was once a part of you. And I'm not, I'm not speaking against you. I'm just speaking the real. Use some of that money to start setting up schools outside of the government. Because these people do it. Other nations do it. This for those who may watch this. Since when y'all watch the video, next when we watch the videos live, type in, hey, hey elders, are you gonna start setting up schools for our youth? Hmm. Because you cannot love God if you don't love His children. And you know. Most I will, we're going to start homeschooling my son because we don't have funds to establish a school system here. But we can all start within our own homes if most I will. But y'all got a lot of money. You've been doing this for a while now. Your lifestyle has changed. I, I remember how, how you were years ago. You look a lot better now. So, but focus on our youths too, my brothers. Let's go. Verse verse 13, therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose sudden, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. So the most high describing how perverse, how our perverseness, our iniquity, our sin will appear to him because this is an evil people. Because we are a rebellious people, because we refuse to listen to his laws and do them, our sin, he described it as a breach ready to burst. Mm -hmm. It's like a dam Mm -hmm. ready to burst. It's that much, we are that wicked to him. We are that wicked. We're, We're like a dam about to burst. It's filled with sin. Our communities, imagine this picture our community, all the people within, like you said, people are water because most high describes people as water. And many waters, some of the people. Let's say our people are, uh, are um, inside of a dam and we're pressing against the walls constantly, spilling over, spilling over. The bricks are starting to loosen and we're about to bust. We're that sinful before the most high people. He hates sin and those that do it. Great. Next precept, the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 15 through 20. So the Messiah is about to explain to our people what he was talking about. Was not talking about 
the dietary law being done away with. But the original question was, why do they ask the Messiah, why does his, his disciples neglect the, the, the traditions of the elders, right? And eat with unwise hands. Read. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Where you at? Oh, 15, 15. Okay, go ahead. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Yahshua said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the draught? But those things which proceedeth out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. But to do what? But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Not talking about it's okay to eat pork. Exactly. But check it out though. The Christ is saying it's he's really breaking down, exposing the Pharisees, the religious leaders. You're talking about my disciples eating with dirty hands. That don't defile a man. But what's in your heart mm -hmm. and it will come out your mouth is what defile a man. When you teach false doctrines, mm -hmm. when you deny the, 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 the law of the Most High God, that defiles a man. Why? Because it leads to what? Uh, evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. That's what it leads to. Mm. Yes. Man, that's that's heavy because that's aside from eating pork, like what a lot of pastors uh, say is okay. All which these, is a which is a blasphemy, blasphemy that come out exactly. Of his mouth. All these things are things being that are proceeding out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. They're murdering the people by not teaching them the law. The thefts, they're taking these people's money. You mm -hmm. know, like and, and false witness. Is 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 wow. And in the midst of what we're going through. As far as in this time, like all the things we just discussed dealing with, you know, their attack on the children and everything is just it's, it's so sad that these are the the so-called leaders and that they're compromised. You know, it's that's what the Messiah says, you know, watch, beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees, con, con. beware of them. It's the doctrines that they teach that defile you. And one of the greatest signs he gave us from the beginning when they asked him what would be the sign of his coming, he says, he says, um, beware many false prophets will come in my name. Mm -hmm. And this is will be their situation. What's in their heart is sin. Come, come. Therefore, they will teach sin. And the blind will lead the blind. And they will make you twice the child of hell. And y'all both will go into, into the pit, into hell. That simple. That's what's going on, people, because you don't want to follow the most high laws and commandments. The most high said you do not want to hear his word. You despise his law. Let this not be your case. Right. Next. Uh, slide. Yep. Next precept, the uh, book of Proverbs, chapter six, verse 14 through 15. And it reads, forwardness is in, is in his heart. He delivereth mischief. He, so, he deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. See? Perverseness. Forwardness. Things that, thoughts, imaginations that are against the most high God is in the heart. Christ has told us that. Mm -hmm. Right? It, it says he deviseth mischief. Continually. They devise mischief, foolishness, things again that are opposed to the Most High's word. Continually. 
They create their own doctrines. They follow the doctrines of Gentiles who are lawless people by nature, according to the scriptures. You sow, if you sow discord. By their fruit, you should know them. By their fruit, you should know them. The plants, the trees have sown discord. And the fruit are a people of lawlessness. That's the fruit. You are the fruit, people. You're not keeping the law, established and commandments, no matter what you say. Continue to watch these videos. They're full of spirit and truth. The videos, the premise of the videos, the most I has given us to make is for your edification. It's for your salvation. To, to snatch you out of darkness into the marvelous light of the Messiah. Because these plants, these trees, these little leaders have sown discord and have destroyed the Most High's vineyard, which be you. But it's in, like I said, it's in the heart. So we're getting educated on that heart today. The Most High really does know your heart. He says, so of discord continually, mischief. Read, let's preach up. Uh, verse 15 therefore shall his calamity come suddenly suddenly shall he be broken without remedy see there's a wrath there's a judgment for that there be no remedy there be no repentance when the Messiah comes for anyone that followed these these wolves and sheep's clothing next precept the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 Verse 9. Let's get it. And it reads, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Do, do y'all understand that? This is a very common scripture, right? But let's understand what it's saying. It's saying that the heart it is desperately wicked. When something is desperate, what does that mean? It's going full force at what it's trying to do. It's desperate. Like, you know, it's desperate. It's trying to fulfill his will on wherever his will is. Yeah, he desperately trying to get somewhere. You're going to try your hardest. So that means mm. if something desperate, that means it's very persistent. Mm -hmm. Ain't no slapping sister. It's mm -hmm. desperately wicked. It's highly persistent to do mischief, to mm -hmm. do wickedness. That's what your heart is doing to you. It's deceiving you to believe, you, like I said, your vain, evil imagination. Because it leads you against the most high God. See, he said, your heart is wicked. It's desperately wicked. Who can know it? The most high. Read. Let's preach up. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 28, verse, 40, verse 26. Mm -hmm. 26. 28, 26. Proverbs. Proverbs 28. Concerning the heart, the Most High is about to get com give us commandment. Okay? Let's get it. And it reads, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. What now? He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. So you can't trust your heart. Next. Continue to read. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. See, according to the scriptures, a fool is one, according to the Most High, who loved death. Mm -hmm. A fool is one who despises his law. A wise man is one that does not reject his commandments. So walking wisely means you walking according to what the Most High say because you fear him. And you don't want the calamity to come upon you without remedy. 
See, a wise person will get their life in, in harmony with these scriptures. Mm-hmm. A fool will be prideful and reject it. Next precept. Next precept, the book of James, chapter 1, verse 12. And it reads, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. See, it's possible to be righteous. Will we be tempted? Yes, all the time. But blessed is he that endureth it. Read. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. When he is tried and endures, overcome it, the Messiah will give him the crown of life, which is immortality in his kingdom. Read. Which the Most High hath promised to them that love him. Which the Most High has promised to them that love him. Right? Who are those that love him? Let's get that. Keep his commandments. But yeah, see, we all know that, but we're going to let the Bible speak. Con. First John right. chapter 5, verse 3. Hmm. And it reads, so this is the definition, according to the Most High, what loving him means. According to your works and your faith, because if you don't have works with faith, it's dead. So you must have faith to believe in the Most High. Not just believe that he exists, but believe that he is rewarder of the things that he promised. Either calamity without remedy, or as it says, we give you the crown of life, which he's promised. You must believe the Most High is going to fulfill what he said. Because it's written that his word does not come out void, does not return to him void. It has success of what he purposed it. So, loving him don't got nothing to do with, like Christ says, you know, your lips, your mouth. Because he said these people honor me with their mouths and with their lips. We call them hypocrites. So to truly love the Most High, according to the Most High, you read? For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. Those who love the Most High keep his commandments. Christ also says, he that love me, add known to this. Keep his my commandments. He that don't love me, don't. Okay? Read again. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So he's answering that question for all those who love and say, well, the Israelites have so many laws, they can keep them. No, the most I said they ain't hard. That's what grievous means, not hard. I mean, grievous means hard. He mm-hmm. said they're not grievous. So that's a lie he was told. Another one. Our right, people who did not, not keep his law because they was hard. Our right, people didn't keep his law because, like he said, they were a rebellious, stiff-necked people that did not want to hear his word, that despised his law. That's why they didn't keep his laws. Mm-hmm. Yes. And just to uh, add on real quick, when I hear that too, I think of to cause sorrow, like the word grieve, like if you grieve something or if you're grieving, it's usually something that's causing some form of sorrow or sadness. So his laws will not cause you to feel sorrow or sadness if you truly love him. That's an excellent point, brother. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Because when you love the Most High and keep his commandments, you learn to, like like, as he say, live in them. Mm Mm-hmm. It becomes you, becomes your way of life, and you love to. I mean, you learn to love His laws and appreciate His laws because you see how much the Father really loves you and is trying to protect you from the ills of this world, which does cause sorrow. Mm-hmm, exactly. Breaking His laws does bring sorrow. Mm-hmm. Everything you see in the world as this right now that causes you sorrow is because you're not keeping His laws, having commandments. Con. Everything. She said, keeping the laws actually bring you peace. See, that's the peace in his world. Mm-hmm. world because that's the peace that the Messiah said he, well, he promised us to give us if he kept his laws. So we have a peace because we're not going through the stuff that the world is going through. It's not affecting us. You know, I, I, and if we physically yeah. going through it like a hard time, 
yeah. I can't work for this or that. It doesn't affect me knowing who I am, mm-hmm. what he told me would happen, and, and what to expect if I continue to follow the law of statutes. Right. Con, exactly. But, Con. you know, if, if, if you're not fornicating, you don't have the stress of what comes with that. Right. Disease, unwanted babies, drama. Yeah. Trust issues. That's a lot of sorrow. Mm-hmm. Headache. <laughs> Headaches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But let's keep going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's go. Next precept. James chapter 1, verse 13. So for all those, no, this is for information. For all those who uh, may have read this Bible and you see where in the beginning, though, that there's a tree of knowledge and good and bad, the Most High did not create the tree. Our records show that Satan planted that tree, okay, which fits what, what, what James is, is getting ready to say. Most High doesn't tempt men. Mm-hmm. That's why he warned Adam not to touch it because he didn't plant that. Remember, everything the Most High made was good. Mm-hmm. He didn't make anything bad. Yeah. Satan planted that tree. The book of Rever- I mean, the book of Genesis is, o- is an overview of, of thousands of years. So it's not giving you all the details within that record. But the, our records, I think it's in Baruch. It shows that, third Baruch, I think, mm-hmm. um, talks about Satan planting that tree. But let's go. Mm-hmm. So God's not evil that he planted a tree and tested his son with. Okay. But let's go. James chapter 1, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. And let's just break this down for a second. Because for all those who think God came down in the flesh, right? Mm. His son came down in the flesh. Like it said, God cannot be tempted with evil. He, he, Satan can't tempt this God. <laughs> make, make that make sense. Satan mm. tempted God. Huh? God cannot be tempted with evil. He hates it. Read. Really? That's it. Yep. So let no man say that he is tempted by God. All right? Next precept, first Peter chapter five, verse eight through ten. Let's see what what who who tempts you and how. Okay? And it reads. Be sober. See, be sober. Why is that the first thing Peter is saying? The head of the church. We talked about earlier about you know, being intoxicated under influence of many drugs, even alcohol. Now, alcohol is, drinking alcohol is not a sin. The Messiah loved to drink wine. Mm-hmm. Right? Even made probably the best wine ever to be on earth. Hmm. Can't wait to get back. I can drink with, 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 with my big brother. He said that I will not taste of the, of the blood of the grace until I return. I can't wait Con. to see what, you know, what that wine tastes like. <laughs> it's way better than wine we're going to partake in in a little while. But mm. drinking is not a sin, people. It's the overindulgence in it, which is a sin. Being a drunkard is mm-hmm. a sin. But he's warning us to be sober-minded, and that's why we were saying earlier that these people love to have our people under the influence of drugs because you, 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 you're under the influence of demons and you are controlled by them. You, you, know, you lose your self-control. Read. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be, be vigilant in your walk in Christ. We are called to be soldiers of Christ. I was telling my uh, wife this last night, I think it was, I said, everything that is physical is also spiritual. Mm-hmm. The most high call for our forefathers to be soldiers. I said, what's a soldier? A soldier is one that is courageous, willing to give his, his life up for his commandments of his fathers, of his God, and for his nation. No matter what circumstances, they have committed themselves to die for the, 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 uh, the preservation, he said, mm-hmm. the preservation of our people and the laws on a physical level. 
But spiritually, we must also be soldiers. We must have that same mentality as a soldier, spiritually. That's why it says be vigilant, be valiant, be courageous. We, have to, we, we are not to fear these devils. Again, we are to respect them, but not fear them. For the one that is with us is greater than all. For if God is with us, who can be against us? We must believe that he's with us and fight these, these, these Satanists and overcome them. That's what the scriptures are talking about. Let's get it. Because your adversary... The so mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're intoxicated, how can you be a good soldier? You're not that alert. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? But well, let's go. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. See, he's the one. They're the one. The devils. Satan leads these demons. They're walking about, seeking to devour someone that could be weak. Waiting for the opportunity, like a lion, waiting for opportunity to, to you know, get to pray. Mm -hmm. It's not the most high, it's Satan. That's who tempts us, not the most high. Next precept. Uh, through, through verse 10. Get it. Verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So there's nothing that you're going through that your brothers and sisters ain't going through. Mm -hmm. Right? But the, God, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Yasha, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. Make you what? Perfect. Make you what? Make you perfect. Okay, I thought we were just imagining that. No, no. This is growth. Got to grow to it. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. And the next precept, the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. And it reads, Then was Yasha led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Just showing again that, as the scripture said, God cannot be tempted. Showing that Christ and God is not, is not the same person or same entity. They're separate. Christ is the son of the Most High. And it's showing that he was also tempted just as we were. But the difference was he stayed faithful to the Most High, to his commandments. He understood the scripture because he is the word. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So back to first Peter chapter five, verses eight through 10. Okay. <laughs> Showing also, but showing also again that Satan and, and these evil spirits are those uh, spirits, and that's what tempt us. Exactly. Yeah. So well, you heard what I said, right? Yeah, okay. That's, that's perfect. Okay. I'm gonna get a last bit. Okay. Um, ten. First Peter chapter five, verse ten. Yep. Got it. First Peter chapter five, verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Yahshua Christ, after that ye have suffered a while. See, the true disciples will suffer. Mm -hmm. In the book of Daniel, it says that, that these devils are going to afflict his saints. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through it. It's not going to be a happy-go-lucky when we are... You know, getting all this money and having a good time, it's going to be affliction. Mm -hmm. Okay? Read. Suffer a while. Make you perfect. Make you perfect. Through these scriptures. Through mm -hmm. the spirit. Grow you into perfection. So you rightfully be able to, to discern between evil and righteousness. To consistently 
in the fear of the Most High, make righteous judgments according to your decision making, mm-hmm. your conduct. To see Satan for what he really is and see him coming a mile away. Yes. Your heart string, putting your heart. So. I think we, we think we're discussing about um, like if someone you know, like say right now, like we're commanded to come to class. Real talk. This is what the Most High he, he commands. We we got to see it for what it really is, right? If one of our loved ones is is in the hospital in a bad state, you can't change that person. We are commanded to come to class. If you have a body, you have to man, you are commanded. Not to forsake the assembly. Christ said, let the dead bury the dead. Follow me. But here's where discipline comes in. Like, cause she stated, well, if this is going on, or I'm going there, I can watch it on TV. No, you can't. If you fear the most high or you don't. You, I said, because class. You can't just stay. You, you can't save that person. The most high makes that decree. Whether that person live or not. Well, how you can say that person is through your prayers. Uh, hmm. But you, first you got to be obedient and then you pray. If you're just obedient and you sitting in the hospital with your, per, with your, with your loved one praying, he's not hearing your prayer. Because first of all, you're disobedient. Uh, hmm. Most I said, if you don't do what he say do, he'll cut you off from his people. Yeah. And if, Let's just go back into this, this time. You think we're the only people? You think these people back in this Bible when they had sick people? When they was, had to walk... To Jerusalem to, to to go to the Holy Day. You think they had people sick, dying, mm. or that is something new? See, he, see, Satan will get you because you will feel. No, how you looking over there? Because you are looking like uh, anyway. We're going to make all them funny faces there. <laughs> Told you them faces gonna gonna give me say something about you. But we automatically think, well, my loved one is you know in the hospital and going through the situation. I gotta be there. That's the most highest child. Mm-hmm. Like he said, you don't love his creature more than he do. Right. He can manage you while you got life to be obedient. But your prayers, the prayers of the righteous will be heard. Availeth much, God. Availeth much. So in time passing, we get your ignorance. But once you come into the knowledge of the most high, we are to put, he said, he that put mother, father, child before me is not worthy of me. What do you think that means? Hmm. That man who came to Christ, his father, he said, let me go bury my daddy. He, Christ said, let the dead bury the dead. Now, does that mean we don't go to funerals? No, that's not what we're talking about. The decree is already made. You can't do nothing for that person. A dead, it's like I said, a live dog is better than a dead lion. Mm. That lion was more mightier than that dog. But my, you got breath, you have an opportunity. That lion don't have an opportunity anymore. But don't lose your opportunity. Uh-huh. Pulling your heartstrings, your vain imaginations in your heart. There's nothing that we can put, no, nothing, no person, no nothing. Like, Paul says, nothing should separate us from the love of Christ. No spirit, no nothing. That's why this kingdom is for a few. This world to come is for a few. Those who would not under no circumstance. That's why Christ says, when the Roman Empire, uh, when, when the Roman armies come past the city, flee to the mountains. He that's in the field, don't come back. You got everything that you care about in the city, in your house. Don't come back. Hmm. He that put his hands on the plow and look back is not fit for the kingdom. That must be your focus, the most high, and reward that's before us. God. Again, remember Lot's wife. She looked back. She had children in her house. Her two daughters left that was not married. Her daughters that was married was in the house. They didn't leave. And everything that she had and everybody that she was friends with was back in Simon Gomorrah. And she's there as a memorial of disobedience for us today. You see how serious this walk is. See, this is what the, this is why people don't want to hear. Mm-hmm. They refuse this truth. Well, people, this is the truth. I know who my God is. And I teach him through his spirit. 
We must have strict obedience to the Most High. If it's a holy day, you better not miss this holy day for nothing. If you've got ability to get to a holy day, you better go. If it's a Sabbath, you better go. That's a commandment. You can't sit back and I'm saying watch it on TV because you're creating your own righteousness. For those who don't have a body, then that that's grace. You don't, you don't have a body, but you can do the best of your ability to stay attentive to this class and any other class out there with these brothers that are teaching the truth. I'm not the only person teaching the truth. But you could not save your loved one by being there. Mm. You come to class and do whatever you got to do, and then you go, and then you do that. But you don't put nothing before the most high. If you do, then y'all y'all will be together. Mm. Flat out. That's the truth. Don't let our emotions get, get us twisted. The most I don't care about your emotions. All I care about is your obedience. He that lose this will gain more in the kingdom. And seriously, whether you believe it or not, some of that you won't, according to the Bible, you won't even remember. So do you want to have that out of your memory, or do you want to be one of those who the most high does not remember in hell? See, we have to face reality, people. This is what the scriptures are for. But let's go. Next precept. Oh, what I want to bring out is, oh, yeah. it is it is through the spirit of Christ given to him by his father to, to strengthen us. Christ is a gift to us. We're not fighting. Our weapons are not carnal. Mm -hmm. Our adversaries are not carnal. So our protection is not carnal. But it was Christ that would establish us, strengthen us when, when we are weak, if we believe and keep. See, it's not just believing that he's no son of God or he came down. No, if we believe and we love him and stay obedient to him, if we believe that he will protect us. He be, we believe he will strengthen us. We, we believe he will reward us for our obedience, as he promised. He that overcome, if I would make him a, he that overcome the world, I would make him a pillar in my father's kingdom. So we have to overcome temptation. And temptation is anything before you that can cause you to sin against the most high. And that was one of them. We got to gird up. Like I told you, we got we to gird up, people. We at war. When you at war, do you go home because you got bad news? Mm -mm. You understand? Matter of fact. Finish the mission. Yep. Keep three. Next, next, next precept. Next precept. Uh, the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Precept to bad that up. No man that wharf entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Mm -hmm. We are at spiritual war. There's a time and place for everything, according to the Most High. He will grant you your, your heart desire. He might even give that, that individual a, a, another year or two because of your obedience. He has done it in the past. So don't let that snare you. But let's go. Job chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. And the highest said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the high and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. From walking up and down. Remember, Satan was able at that time to go to both realms, on earth and into hell. Mm -hmm. He's walking to and fro, all across the earth, and going down into the pit. But Christ came and, 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 and got the victory. Now he has the keys. He can't go back. But Satan is the one. He's, he's walking about the earth to do what? tempt God's people to destroy them. Mm -hmm. So it's not the most high. Okay? But let's go. Next precept. And the highest said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man? Uh -huh. A perfect. They go perfect man for you. Mm -hmm. Another one. And upright man. One upright that, man. Let's go. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. One that fear God and hate evil. See? Perfect man. Mm -hmm. Many of them in this Bible. Just read it. You'll find that to be true. 
Next precept. Next precept, the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 34 through 36. And it reads, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with sur surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day, and so that day come upon you unawares. See, when you're intoxicated, that day, if you're spiritually intoxicated with mm -hmm. these false doctrines, that day will come upon you like a thief because you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You're so caught up in this this prosperity and all this stuff going on with the, what's going on in the world that you don't even know what's going on because you were spiritually intoxicated. Like the Most High said, they are, that we are drunk but not with wine. Mm -hmm. We are drunk off the doctrines of these false religious teachers. But let's get this word. Suffering, right? Mm -hmm. It's like probably a headache or a, or a seizure of pain from drunkenness, a hangover. Mm -hmm. Okay? So don't be caught up in a spiritual hangover, even a physical one. It's very important to be sober-minded, physically and spiritually. Let's go. For as a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. See, no one is going to escape the temptation of Satan. So that's why it says no sin is common to man. He's doing the same thing to all people. But there are those who will stand stiff for the Most High and overcome this demon who do, who those in hell going to look at when they in hell with them and like this the man this the man that this deceived us mm. you just about the hatred they're going to have for him know that he's the one that caused them to be down there with him getting tormented well, let's go watch ye therefore do what watch ye per therefore we got to watch pay attention be alert always Read. And pray always. And do what? And pray always. That prayer go again. That prayer is very important. Pray always. We have to rely on the Most High for all things. According to His will, He would grant all our desires. According to His will. Read. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. See, it's possible. Mm -hmm. But see how that prayer come first? Come. Huh. Watch. Be alert. Be sober minded. Be faithful. Be obedient. And pray to the, to, the, to, to the Heavenly Father through Christ. You don't pray to Christ. You pray through him in his name. You pray to a higher and you pour out your heart to him. And then you say, I ask these things or I say these things in the name of your son, Yasha, Aman. Okay? That's the proper way to pray. And then he will give you that strength. Mm -hmm. Stay to, so you can stand fast. Fight these demons. And escape the wrath that's coming. Read. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. See, we have to be able to stand before the Son of Man in confidence, knowing that we were obedient. Because that's why I said you have to believe on him. That's what it really means, people. You have to believe in him that if, if, if you're not obedient to him, you're going to stand before him and he's going to destroy you. But if you believe on him and do what he say, you are obedient to his words, you can stand before him with, with, with joyfulness, awaiting your reward from him because he promised to reward you and not to destroy you. Mm -hmm. See, with believe in him that he's the judge that's going to judge everyone. And our, and, and our life must bear record. Our lives must bear witness to that fact. Our lives must be a testimony of obedience or disobedience. Right? Next precept, uh, James chapter 1, verse 14 through 16. And it reads, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now that's, that's how it goes down. 
every man is tempted by his own lust, what's in his or her heart. Satan is walking around like a roaring lion, mm -hmm. using the things that we just spoke about, the things that are really in your heart. Say, know what you love. And that's what he uses. This is how sin operates. People, let's go. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. When lust hath conceived, conceived, right? It's mm -hmm. brought forth life to this action. Satan, put in your mind, put in your mind, put in your face. Put this before your face. Somebody's out the blue. You ain't talked to in years and called you on the phone. You done ran into him at the store. And, and Satan is drawing you out. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Are you subject to, 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 to disobey the most high? No. But if you love yourself, again, more than you love the most high, you'll be drawn away from the most high according to your own lust. Mm -hmm. What you really want to do. I was talking to a sister a while ago about thieves, right? Mm -hmm. Someone she's close to said that, well, how the story go? Okay, let's say someone was working around a lot of money, mm -hmm. right? But they never stole be, be up for it. All of a sudden, they have these hard times that's going on at the house or somebody's doing this and that. And they see they get opportunity to steal some money unnoticed. Well, the person that was telling the story justified themselves because they said, well, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, that's not being a thief. No, the opportunity came and I just did what I had to do to take care of my situation. So to them, it was a good thing that they, you know, this, say somebody was, they needed something to pay their medical bills or something. Mm -hmm. So they stole some money, you know, to pay the medical bills. Was they created in their mind as a good thing? Mm -hmm. No, you're a thief. Mm -hmm. But you see how people can create their own righteousness mm -hmm. and justify their own evil works. Wow. No, Satan has used the opportunity to bring out what was really inside of you. Mm -hmm. You're a thief. But he will, he, will, he will put in your mind that you did a good thing. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You see how deceitful Satan works? But let's go. Then when lust, lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is sin, finished. And sin is a transgression of God's law. Come. So once you have bought into the lie, the same planet in your mind, it conceived and brought forth sin, disobedience. Read. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. What? And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So my people out there, ask yourself, is it worth it? The wage of sin pays is death. Mm -hmm. So the Most High did not command us to live accordingly to how we want to live. You are, if you're one of these persons, if you're not keeping, if you don't love God according to how the Most High say you must love him, which is keeping his commandments. If you're doing your own commandments, you're in a, in a category of what the Most High call the children of disobedience, which whom the end of the world and the wrath of the Most High is, will come upon. Or those scenarios that we just painted. Is it worth it? Is your lust worth losing your soul? Because the end thereof, he said, is death. Because that sin is going to lead you to eternal hellfire. So again, that, that, that situation that Satan put before you, we must see it as what it is. Death. Mm -hmm. If we do so, we will overcome. No matter what the circumstance is, if we know it's against the most high, we know what the end of there will be. You gonna say something? Oh no. No, okay. just last uh let's get it. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Do not err. Don't let your mind trick you. The most high is not who who's been taught in these churches. Do not err. We must have strict obedience in our service and worship to our creator. We must do only the things that are pleasing to him, not to ourselves or any other person for that matter. Next precept and last precept. The book of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. Mm -hmm. I tried to. Go ahead. 
We're going to end with this precept, my people, my family. It reads, but the end of all things is at hand. Watch, remember? He said, watch. The end of all things are, are at, at hand. If we're not sober-minded, this fact escapes our thought. The end of all things as we know it is at hand. Do we believe that? Are the signs not here? These are the signs that Christ says we've been going on before his coming. What scripture are we on? Seven? Seven. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore, again, sober and watch unto prayer. You see how important prayer is? Watch. Be in tune to what's going on around us, y'all. And do only the things that please the Most High. Keep His laws and commandments. Mortify the flesh. Let the old man die and live the new. I hope this class was edifying for all. With that, any questions? You ask them. Not Shalom. 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 Shalom.